the criteria. So uh, it continues to look good. I'm sure if it was daylight, it would probably be a cloudless sky for the most part there at Kennedy Space Center. So with that in mind, let's go back to Daryl at Kennedy as we continue to approach liftoff just under 11 and a half minutes from now. All right, good call outs there, Kate. Appreciate that. Some final thoughts from the commander of Crew 3 before we watch Crew 6 lift yeah, off. It's a, it's a great time to be here. You'll, you'll hear them in a few minutes uh, when they make the 10 minute call and confirm their displays are ready. Uh, the crew will probably give a message thanking folks and just uh, the thoughts on their mind. There's a lot of work and a lot of people that have worked a long time to get them here. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty special moment. And when uh, they lift off, they'll be 260 miles over southwest of New Zealand. And with that, we want to focus on the pad now as we proceed through the final stretch of the countdown. We'll turn it over to Gary and Kate at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California to take us through launch and ascent. Thanks, Daryl. The energy is certainly starting to grow as we get closer and closer to T0. As you can see the vehicle there at pad 39A, that's Falcon 9 with the Dragon capsule positioned on top. Now we're going to go through a couple of things, including some physical changes to the pad, um, but you will likely hear a number of callouts um, after liftoff uh, that are basically indicative of the various abort modes um, that Dragon passed is through during flight. Now T minus 10 minutes. Dragon, SpaceX, confirm crew displays are configured for launch. Uh, SpaceX Dragon crew displays are configured for launch. SpaceX right. copies. On behalf of our entire team at SpaceX, we're honored to, we are honored to have you aboard Dragon Capsule Endeavor today for its next trip to the International Space Station. We wish you a great mission, good luck, Godspeed, and enjoy the ride. And thank you very much for those kind words. We'd like to thank all the trainers, technicians, engineers, decision makers, and planners who have uh, defined our mission ahead and trained us in a given the faith in us to execute that mission, and Crew 6 is ready to launch. And those words coming from the crew, Crew 6 inside the Dragon right now, under nine minutes from launch, those final instructions meaning we are in terminal count. Falcon 9 launch commit criteria is getting checked by the computers. And we're in the final stretch here inside 10 minutes until liftoff. Kate was mentioning a series of uh, number and letter combinations that you'll hear upon ascent once we get to that point. That'll be those uh, Abort, different abort modes that would be tracking throughout the ascent. There's uh, an Alpha and, and Bravo on the first stage, and there's 2A through 2E on the second stage uh, as we track it up the eastern seaboard. Right now coming up on T minus eight minutes, the next major milestone that we'll be hearing uh, will be about the uh, engine chill. That's right. That's a um, important step of the countdown. That's basically when at T minus seven minutes, uh, we will uh, open the pre-valves of the engines to allow a little bit of the super chilled liquid oxygen into the Merlin turbo pumps uh, prior to the full flow of locks that occurs during ignition. Now, that's important because at this point in time, um, all the hardware is at ambient temperature. So by f opening the pre-valves and flowing a little bit of that super chilled uh, densified liquid oxygen helps um, prepare the hardware for that colder temperature when the full flow of locks occurs. We should hear that call out in about 10 seconds. Engine chill. And there's that call out indicating that those pre-valves have been opened and now there's a little bit of that super chilled liquid oxygen flowing through the hardware 
uh, basically chilling it out uh, on prior to liftoff. That's right. In the meantime, we're tracking fuel on the vehicle. Stage 2 RP1, or the fuel on the second stage, is complete. It's one of the earlier tanks to be completely filled in the countdown. But as we ch are, uh, continue to track the fuel loading, the next thing uh, will be the stage one, stage one RP, RP one load. Complete. That's coming up here in about 15 seconds. Later in the countdown, we'll be tracking the um, tanks of oxidizer being completely filled. That RP-1 load is now complete on the first stage. So at this point in time, all RP-1 is now on Falcon 9, both for the first and second stages. Locks load continues, wrapping up at about T minus three minutes for first stage and T minus two minutes for the second stage. Coming up, we'll hear the call for Dragon to... Dragon, SpaceX, for awareness, we are seeing a T-tab load issue and are troubleshooting. We are currently still go, but have further evaluation before making a final decision. We'll get to a final read before T-0. And SpaceX, Dragon, done. That call out there, just communicating to the crew that the launch teams are troubleshooting. Uh, a small issue with TTEB, and uh, they will have some more information uh, for the crew in the next couple of minutes. That TTEB, as I mentioned earlier. Dragon is in configure for terminal count. And there's that Concern call. Tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. A lot of information coming through right now, just to indicating that uh, that Dragon is now on internal power, um, and now we are basically preparing to retract the strong back, which is the white structure there to the right of the rocket. We will see the clamps open just under those clamps, just under the dragon trunk. Those will begin to open and the strong back will retract away from the vehicle. Yeah, that's right. We'll see those clamps on the top of the structure there, just under the dragon's trunk, which you can identify by the black uh, solar panels on the left of the base of the capsule itself and to the right. Uh, and then the structure itself will lean about two degrees uh, and then it will retract the rest of the way once Dragon actually hits that T0 mark and lifts off. We're seeing those clamps being undone now. The two degree lean will be very subtle and then you'll see it more when we hit that T0 mark. That's right. At liftoff, Falcon 9 will, or excuse me, the TE will actually um, retract to 45 degrees to clear the way for Falcon 9. That TE is basically what uh, attaches, has the umbilicals that attach to the vehicle that provide power, telemetry, and fluids prior to liftoff. Now coming up in 10 seconds, we'll be listening for a call complete. on stage one liquid oxygen load being complete. Dragon is in terminal count and on internal power. Minus two minutes, this 30 is the seconds. LD on countdown one. Hold, hold, hold. We are sending down due to a T-tab ground issue. As you just heard, we have. Has started. As you just heard, we have a hold tonight uh, due to the TTEB issue that I mentioned prior, and the Dragon SpaceX with that call from LD, you are go to step into five decimal one hundred launch scrub. Five decimal one hundred launch scrub. That's in work. 
as with everything else, we are prepared for all scenarios, including, unfortunately, as we've seen tonight, a scrub. So the teams are now stepping into those procedures. That's right. Again, it was uh, the teams were tracking a uh, ground issue with TTEB. That's the ignition fluid. Uh, that actually uh, sparks with the oxidizer and allows the engines to uh, fire. The teams were tracking this issue, and so we're in a nominal scrub configuration. We'll start to see sort of the, a sequence of uh, reversing some of the milestones we've been tracking as part of this countdown until the uh, crew axis arm swings back to the side hatch and so the hatch will, the crew can egress the vehicle as part of a nominal launch scrub so for those of you just joining at about just just under two, T, T minus two and a half minutes. We unfortunately had a scrub due to a T-TEB issue uh, with the ground systems. So as Gary mentioned, we are in a nominal scrub configuration. There we have our procedures now being enacted to uh, basically reverse all the progress that we made this evening including propellant offload and bringing that crew access arm back into position and getting the astronauts out. Up until that point, everything was looking good. The uh, ground team had reported a, that issue. Uh, I believe it, it was around T minus five minutes. At this point in time, the launch escape system is still armed. But the crew continuing to look comfortable there inside Dragon Endeavor. And Dragon LD on countdown one. At this time, our offloads are underway. Vehicle is safe and proceeding nominally with offload. Expecting about a 50 minute offload. Six Dragon copies about a five zero minute offload. And we'll be sitting here waiting. Thanks. So it will be a very methodical process to offload the Falcon 9 with the propellant and oxidizer. You can still you can see some of that. Uh, some of that oxygen billowing off still. That'll be part of the sequence. They've also re-enabled auxiliary power to um, by umbilical to the Dragon as they uh, work their way through the nominal scrub timeline. Again, that's a 50-minute offload. For those, again, that are joining, we are in a scrub situation just under 2 minutes and 30 seconds from launch. Teams declared a scrub due to tracking a, a uh, ground issue with uh, TTEB. This is the ignition fluid uh, that's used uh, for the first and second stages that ignites the oxidizer for uh, igniting the engines themselves to lift Dragon uh, and uh, into space. They were tracking this issue and declared a scrub again at the 2 minute 30 second mark. So we're going through a nominal uh, scrub uh, with a 50 minute fuel offload you can see the strong back clamps have been re-enabled in this view right here. After we offload prop, we'll see the crew axis arm swing back to get the crew out. In the meantime, the launch escape system, uh, which is uh, enables the Super Dracos to fire should there be any anomaly with the uh, Falcon 9 during the offload procedure. The crew, the crew does they have the ability to, to perform a pad abort. Right now, uh, the ground teams are tracking no issues. Everything going according to plan uh, for a nominal scrub.
All right, for those who are just joining, as a reminder, we are in a uh, scrub at a, just under two minutes, 30 seconds from launch. Uh, the ground teams declared a scrub as they were tracking a t uh, ground issue with the TTEB ignition fluid. And as a precaution, made a scrub for today's launch as we were counting down to T0. Now we're working our way through nominal um, scrub uh, procedures, which include offloading the fuel and oxidizer that are loaded on the Falcon 9 right now. Uh, you can see we made our way through the countdown to a strong back retract that has been put back into place and the clamps uh, just under the trunk of Dragon are now uh, in uh, their configuration that they were prior to uh, that part of the countdown. And Kate, we're making our way through offloading that uh, Falcon 9. That's right. In total, that prop offload is expected to take 50 minutes, 5-0. So unfortunately, at this point in time, there's not a whole lot that the crew there can do except patiently wait. I could imagine that they might be a little sad as of um, because the, otherwise they, they would be in space at this point, <laughs> effectively. Mm -hmm. um, but at, right now, they, as you can see, they are just sitting back and relaxing um, as the Falcon 9 teams on the ground continue to keep them updated. Um, as Gary said, this is a nominal scrub uh, procedure uh, or configuration. We have procedures listing out every step of this. So right now we are basically unfueling Falcon 9 from both the first and second stages uh, as Falcon 9 was nearly fully loaded at the time of the scrub. So as this continues, we will see some puffs of white clouds like you just saw there live um, as that detanking effectively is underway. Um, we will also see the crew access arm uh, go back into the service position uh, that will enable the uh, basically the pad team to re-enter the pad, go back up, and help the four astronauts that are currently there in the capsule um, basically unbuckle and 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 um, get out of the capsule and make their way back down to the ground. And it is going to be a methodical process, like you said, Kate. The uh uh, through the fueling that began at T minus 35 minutes, we made our way uh, quite a bit through the timeline and those tanks were pretty full. So the ground teams estimated a 50 minute, five zero minute offload of that fuel. Meantime, in the meantime, the crew six astronauts are in a passive state. They'll be tracking the fuel offloading process and listening to the communications from the ground teams, giving them status updates along the way. Uh, but we are in a nominal configuration. In the meantime, they've taken the uh, Dragon Falcon 9 off of internal power and re-enabled auxiliary power back into the vehicle uh, as they continue to go through this process. And like you said, Kate, it'll be uh, it'll be a little bit, and then we'll see that crew access arm swing back, uh, and they'll re-access the side hatch. If you were following along on our coverage, uh, they walk down the crew access arm and enter the Dragon through that side hatch. They'll be exiting the same way. Uh, in the meantime, through this whole process, the crew uh, and the Dragon itself will remain with the LES, the uh, Launch Escape System, armed. Uh, so the, if in any event something were to happen as part of the offloading process, they'll be able to escape using the Super Draco engines, the eight Super Dracos that are on the Dragon. Uh, it'll be a pad of bore over into the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Uh, but for now, all the ground teams are tracking uh, that everything is nominal. The fuel offload is going as planned as part of a normal scrub. Uh, and we're just continuing to follow along. That's right. And one thing I want to mention, uh, although this is not what we had hoped to happen today, um, and while we said that this is a nominal uh, abort configuration, uh, technically the crew and the launch teams have already practiced this very similar scenario on Thursday, February 20.